Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Mo. Today we're going to take a look at a, a serious problem, guys. I don't know if you noticed or not, but in many instances, when you have a person who has been incarcerated or they continue to go in and out of jail, there's a great likelihood that they have some type of mental health condition. Let's face it, most people don't want to live under those conditions and they won't continue to offend so that they can go back. In New Orleans, they have recognized that a large number of their inmates have some type of mental health condition. And so they've created a program that will help these folks out. Now, I know many people say, well, that's not what we should be doing with taxpayer dollars. I personally think that maybe this is a good idea. But I want you guys to take a look at this video because it's going to tell you the true benefits as well as some of the problems that they're being faced with. Let's just think about it, guys. It's everybody's problem when we have people that are out here committing crimes and could potentially be something that they do to us or to someone that we love. Man, let's take a look at this video. I'm going to give you my feedback as we look at it. And I want you guys to tell me what, you, what are your thoughts as well. Let's get into it. Up on the fourth floor of one of the most notorious jails in the nation, about 50 men are living together in an experimental community. They play cards and basketball, share books, and cut each other's hair. We try to make sure everybody the cool, calm, collective. NBC News receives special access to the Justice Center in New Orleans. Resident Zachary Terrell took us on a tour of what officials call a model pod for mental health. I'm gonna tell y'all something funny, this is my partner. With the stress of being away from his three daughters after pleading not guilty to armed robbery charges, he says he stands here to talk through his pain out loud. I just talk to him, he don't talk back. Zachary is among the first to experience New Orleans Sheriff Susan Hudson's reforms, aimed at treating pretrial inmates more like patients. Okay, just to jump right in right, right away, just think about it. Zachary said that he's talking to him, speaking to the balloon that he has on his shelf there. He's talking to him about his issues, his problems, and he said that he doesn't talk back. That is indicative of a mental health condition that he's talking to a balloon, but that's also his reality as well. So that lets you know that guys, just because a person is doing things and reoffending, or they find themselves in jail doesn't mean that you should just throw them away or that they always are aware. But it does mean that they could potentially have a mental health condition that needs to be addressed and treated. Let's get back into it. With freedom to set their own schedules, share chores, and bond with each other. Bring y'all to my humble abode. Fellow member Leonard Patty has been in pretrial detention for five years and pleaded not guilty to second degree murder. I probably got the best view in the jail. He says he's lost countless friends to gun violence that he didn't realize until joining this pod that it wasn't normal to live every day expecting to die. Before really? coming to jail, I was cool with that. Like if I had ran to the police and they killed me, I would have been happy. For years, the Orleans Parish Jail has been known for violence and a 10 year federal consent decree monitoring human rights abuses. Experts say it has one other title the largest mental health care provider for all of New Orleans. God, that's huge. They are known as the largest facility, mental health facility in all of New Orleans. That says a lot about the lack of mental health treatment in that city. And these guys are in there. I'm not discounting at all that they've done some wrong things, some bad things, some ugly things, and they should be held accountable. But that doesn't discount the fact that we have a huge problem here. It's New Orleans today but it'll be your town tonight and my town tomorrow if we don't collectively create some processes that can address this thing. What do you think about it? Let's get back into it. Hurricane Katrina flooded the city's charity mental health ward. It never reopened, following a pattern seen across the US. Large mental institutions and psychiatric wards shuttered, many for good reason, as asylums became infamous for poor conditions and mistreatment. But our country did little to replace them. And New Orleans isn't alone. The jails in LA, Chicago, and New York are among the largest mental health providers in America. I don't want a mental health jail, I want a mental health facility. Sheriff Hudson ran for office in 2022, promising to hire clinicians and to fight plans for further jail expansion. According to her office, more than half of the 1,400 people in jail here 
have diagnosed mental disorders, ranging from PTSD to schizophrenia. Why did mental health matter to you? My baby brother, he went to, ran away to the Navy when he was a teenager. He came back PTSD, and then one day he just fell down completely and disappeared. Take your time. Yeah, some of these things, you know, you just trigger back. You're like, the intervention that we did, I had to call the sheriff's office. Hudson became the only female sheriff in the state as she tried to reform Louisiana Republican lawmakers gained a supermajority. Our criminal justice system has lost its balance. Pushing through a slate of crime and punishment laws, including sending 17 year olds to adult jails like this one. Since the spring, the already crowded New Orleans jail population has increased three to 5% every month, according to department data. Did these new laws come with new money? They did not. The model pod invited us inside one of their group mental health discussions. Be free and um, talk about it. Led by Lieutenant Michael Lewis. It's humbling because usually in the, in, the, in the prison setting, it's an aggressive setting. What's the community been like for you? It's open-minded. Like, when I first came, it will be a little intimidation. Guys, this is definitely a huge problem. As you can see, we have people, young and old, that are experiencing mental health crisis. Not to mention, you see firsthand that Incarceration is a huge business. And instead of putting programs in place to prevent people from going into jails and to put things in place to rehabilitate those that are in jail and provide them with the care that they need, we're just creating more programs to house more inmates. This is a problem. It's a huge problem. It's good to know that in New Orleans, they have a program in place that's providing some type of mental health treatment and a whole pod to be exact. Maybe we can replicate this or see a replication of this in other jails across the country so that we can minimize the amount of crime instead of building new prisons and incarcerating more people. What do you think about that? Let's get back to it. Marvell Smith is just 18. When he first arrived, he says, he was harassed by another resident on the pod for being gay. Right there on the spot, I didn't form this program because that type of behavior cannot and will not be tolerated. I was surprised this man right here told me that Lieutenant Lewis, if you had not done that, we would have done it ourselves. I never expected that from I never expected that from But um, I got you. We How many of you would say that you've struggled with your mental health at some point? So almost everyone. Almost everyone, with the exception of like one or two. And in fact, the guy that was talking to the balloon was one of the ones that kept his hand down. So you think about it, practically everyone in that room has suffered from mental health. Not to mention the many others that are not a part of the program that have suffered from it, some type of mental health condition. Think about it, guys. Mental health is huge, and when you are not given the appropriate tools and treatment, you can become a loose cannon. And I don't know about you, I don't care what your mental health status is as long as you're getting the help that you need. We all go through things at times, but I mean, man, you think about it, can you imagine how many people in our local jails that may have some underlying issues, and they're just going to get out, and they're going to reoffend, and they're going to go right back in until someone identify, hey, this person need a little more in order to be a little better. Guys, think about it. What do you think? Let's get back to it. Prior to this experimental pod, did you feel like there were people here who cared about that? No. Very few. No. Michael Lewis, like the love that he give us, I ain't have that since my father passed away. All of the men say they've witnessed family and friends be killed. Several grew up without parents. Many of their families were separated by Hurricane Katrina. This is definitely a cycle, and I'm going to be the one to break it. I'm the last one in my family that's going to be incarcerated. Legal scholar Andrea Armstrong studies what it would take to break that cycle. Our Department of Corrections budget is approaching $1 billion a year. We are first in the nation for incarceration per capita. If incarceration was the thing that made people safe, we would be the safest state in the country. NBC News requested interviews with State Senator Heather Cloud and Representative Raymond Cruz, who spearheaded the new legislation the sheriff alleges impacted the jail. They did not respond. Hey, good morning, y'all. For now, Sheriff Hudson and Lieutenant Lewis say they will keep swimming upstream, reforming one unit at a time. A lot Guys, just think about it. How many sheriffs do we have across the country 
like this particular sheriff that really care? And do you really think that she care because of, do you think that she really care because she's a caring person? Do you think that she care even more because her brother experienced it? Either way, she's identified a huge gap and she's doing something about it. Even our, I mean, you think about it. Is your local sheriff doing anything about um, reducing the amount of mental health that's in your jails or reducing the amount of crime or any type of preventive type programs? Do you even know where your tax dollars are going? Well, that I'm paying them, but I don't know all the time where it's going. I'd love for this to be the, the model for the United States or, or a straw man for additional type programs across the U.S. What do you think about that? Let me know. A lot of people in Louisiana would say, lock them up, throw away the key. I don't want to pay for their therapy, for their group discussion, for a special pod. So why do you do it? If we human beings can make up our minds and treat other people like human beings, that will make a difference. All right, guys, you've seen the video. You've seen the type of program that these guys are in. You've also seen the demographics and what goes on in a jail setting. What do you think about this? Personally, I think... This is a good step in the right direction. Definitely something that we need to model and do more of. I think that it's imperative that we collectively push programs like this to minimize the number of people that are going into these jails and repurposing some of that money that we're using on building additional jails to actually keep them going to jail. Do you think that she needs to be advocating for more programs like this? Do you even think that we, on the local level, the citizens can actually advocate for this and how does that look? I guarantee you if you look at the people that you know that's been to jail, I'm pretty certain that you'll realize that that person particularly or someone in their direct family or immediate family suffer from some type of mental illness. Guys, this is our problem. It's not New Orleans problem. It's not D.C. problem, California problem, Texas problem, New York problem. It's our problem. And I'm talking about as a global citizen, I can assure you that this type of thing is happening around the world. What are your thoughts? Until next time.